Welcome to the Talking Shop Podcast, where I'm here to share lessons and experiences in sports performance and professional development. And on this episode, I'm going to give you guys some insight on how I've recently changed my whole job search strategy, how you can learn from my mistakes, and why I think there's a lot of value that can help you out with a new strategy as well. I'm going to bring this all together, just reflecting on Jeremy Boone's TED Talk, The Courage to Connect. Now, I don't have too many notes prepared for this one. I, I want this to be more natural and authentic, just based on the topic. And, and you know, we'll just get into it. So first, if you haven't listened to this TED Talk, I think Jeremy Boone is one of the most underrated, at least in kind of the social media space. I think he should have blown up long before now. His TED Talk that's been out for, what's this, five months? Only has like 2,500 views. He's awesome. My mentor works with him closely. And I've known his name before, but just the impact that he's had on my mentor and subsequently my mentor has had on me. Just Jeremy Boone is an awesome guy. He has a lot of, I don't want to say novel, but just things that really make you stop and think. I think he's, he's very unique in his delivery and his thought processes and just everything along those lines and he definitely has the I I don't know his you know his whole spiel but I know he's worked with a ton of professional teams he's gotten a lot of awesome results and he's just very good when it comes to some of this more soft science skills type stuff the courage to connect for example uh, if if that's what we want to call it but I would highly recommend listening to this now I'm not going to repeat his talk obviously that's what the talk is for but there's, there's one thing that I really got from uh, my mentor's most recent talk with me that I think is part of this uh, talk as well, is uh, the difference between courage and confidence. And I'll bring this in later, but just to get some operational definitions out of the way. So confidence, when you're feeling good, you know you have your A game, you know your stuff is working well, and, and you feel like you're on, on top of the world. You know, wh- when everyone's feeling like that, everyone... When you know you have your A game, it's it's easy. Everything's easy, right? But courage is when you don't have your A game, when you don't know where the end of the tunnel is, but you know what you have to do in order to get the job done, right? Fill the role, whatever it may, whether it's sports, whether it's your own, you know, personal life, professional life, whatever it may be. Courage is going on when you don't know the quote unquote guaranteed results. If you know you don't have your A game and Connection versus communication. This is another operational definition. Again, not to steal what he's saying, just to just to get operational definitions out of the way. Communication is just the exchange of words. But connection is is when if your presence is not impactful, then your absence won't make a difference. So if you connect, if you mean something right, then you're gonna be more memorable. It's gonna be more intimate, it's gonna have better connections and stuff like that. And tying this into my whole job search. I recently changed my strategy from all the cold applications to investing heavily in this quote unquote networking, not to be cliche, but really giving a push into reaching out to people, contacting them, having phone calls, having Zoom calls and stuff like that, as opposed to just the the cold applications. And I've had so much success, not necessarily on the job front, but just everything else that comes with this new endeavor. And I believe it is 100% worth your time. And I think you can get a lot out of it. And I have a slide here. This isn't, (laughs) it's not that organized. I I try to fit it all, but still make the images big. By the way, this is on YouTube. All of my podcasts since the last five or six or so have been on YouTube. If you haven't checked them out, please do. Uh, I can do a lot more stuff, including the video component as well. Please subscribe to my YouTube, drop a like, comment. I'd love to see you guys over there. But this is just everyone that I could think of that I have had contact with in the past or recently have contacted with my whole new job search strategy of just doubling down on this networking thing. And this isn't to brag, you know, whenever I have a new phone call with someone at one of these awesome places and I get off the phone and I'm, you know, very, very excited. It went well. It was an awesome talk. It kind of hits me. And this is that humbling moment where it's, well, yeah, I don't really have anything to show for it. And it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, people ask what I've been up to. And I tell them, oh, you know, I've been networking, having a lot of awesome phone calls. But, you know, I, I don't have anything to show for it yet. And, and people, you know, they hop on the phone because they have extra free time. They're super nice people, you know, sports performance in general. I would say probably half of these I've recently accumulated. And, this is also to say the first half, don't 
underestimate who's already in your email list and your your phone. Just like literally just scroll through it. It'll take you a few minutes, right? Go, you know, one by one, you can go kind of quick and just think about where they're at now. If they can potentially add value, whether it's just a phone call to connect. You know, I know the assistant uh, volleyball coach at St. Leo University, Abby Moser, she's been out here before. I just know that that she's a coach and, you know, she might have some interesting stories, you know, coaching college sports. And we've had weekly, bi-weekly phone calls since then. And I've really enjoyed getting to know her better, just opening up that dialogue. But, you know, if I wasn't actively seeking out that opportunity to, to connect, then, you know, I would have never changed from communicating with her to connecting, trying to bring it into the theme of this, this podcast. So definitely utilize the resources you already have. You'd definitely be surprised. If not, you're going to catch up with old friends. You can experiment kind of some with some of the questions you're going to ask and just your whole strategy because everything's a skill. You're going to get that much better at having this professional phone call. So now I'm going to get into the people that I've recently connected with and why I'm tying that into Jeremy Boone's TED Talk. So with this whole job search, kind of doubling down on the networking, not to be be cliche, but it's been very cool to be, be actually networking and then hearing these people's stories about how they've gotten to where they are now. And that's part of the reason why a recent shift in my podcasts has been to more storytelling. But you know, it's it's one thing to hear, oh, you got to network, it's all about who you know. But then when you're actually doing it, these people that they have what you want, you know, they've been there, done that, that their stories all consistently line up that it's been who they know. Now, of course, they always follow it up with, you know, you have to walk the walk, whether it's figuring out on the spot or whether you're, you know, qualified from the beginning, it didn't really matter because, you know, at the end of the day, they could walk the walk, but they wouldn't have gotten to that opportunity without knowing whoever it may be. And I'm going to bring up Kyle Boyd again, who was on my last podcast, the founder of the quote, the only difference between you and me is a few people saying nice things about me. And when you network and you get your name out there, not only is it going to potentially help with cold applications, right? Because if they see your name once, you show up in their emails, you have a phone call with them, a message on LinkedIn, or vice versa, if they've already seen your name before, they've already talked to you, and then they come across for the cold application, it's going to send you light years ahead, you know, and uh, one of my friends, hopefully I will have he slash she on in the near future, the job they're currently at now, the job they're currently at now, they first cold applied for it and the person crumpled up the piece of paper and threw it, you know, now their story is a little bit different. Their resume is definitely not a traditional sports performance resume, but because the employer subsequently heard their name from two people that they knew and trusted. They went and found that resume. And that's so important because we're networking with people, humans, not just websites, clicking applications and submissions and stuff like that. They're humans. They trust people. They don't have it all figured out. They rely on others. I'll I'll try to make an analogy. If you wanted to be on my podcast, right? You just slid in my DMs and you said, hey, let me be on your podcast. You know, I can talk about X, Y, Z versus, you know, if you knew one of my friends, someone I've had on the podcast previously, and I was, you know, bouncing ideas off them of who I want to have on, on my podcast. And I hear your name once. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, like, sounds interesting. You know, you've had a good chat with them before. And then you slide my DMs. I've already, it's, you're increasing your opportunity for exposure. You're increasing the amount of times that they are seeing or hearing your name. And the more they hear it, in a positive light from people they respect, from people whose opinions they value, your stock in their eyes are going to go not way up, not through the roof. Like I said, you still have to walk the walk when it comes time to call them, interview, whatever it may be. But you're going to be way farther ahead than if they just saw your name on a computer screen once. With these people that I've had these calls with, they have said they've never gotten a job just with cold applications. Now, the cold applications might be a small percentage of the equation, but like I said, it's still increasing that opportunity to get your name exposed to that potential employer. If your name comes across a cold application and then it later comes across from one of their friends, they're going to put two and two together, right? As opposed to just hearing your name from one of their friends. So like, okay, cool. Who is this guy? But then if they can connect it to an application, then they have literally everything about you. You know, no one's going to be talking up with their old friend. Be like, oh yeah, this, you know, weird dude, Matt Thomas just hit me up. By the way, I'm just going to randomly send you his resume. Like that's not how it works, you know? So I think, I still think that there's value in the cold applications. I'll just put a lot more stock into the networking now. So it's, it's been very cool and exciting just to hear all of these 
experiences from these people, like I said, to reaffirm the networking that I'm doing. And it's, it's time consuming trying to keep up to date with people. And, and when these people say, Hey, I'm busy, I'd love to you know, stay in contact. You seem like a, a bright young dude, but you know, you want to connect with me because I have the position that I have. That's just how it is. So if you basically take control of maintaining this relationship, reaching out every now and again, I love to help you out. Just you're in charge. And I'm very fortunate that I'm young enough in my career where I have the time to do that. But, you know, you, you got to organize phone calls around other people and you have to be available when they're available and stuff like that. And that's, that just comes with the position that I'm in, that you're in at this point in time. And the last thing about this whole networking thing is that it is definitely a skill calling people that you've only exchanged a few emails with, Zooming with people you've only had a few emails with, being professional, that first minute of the phone call, oh my gosh, I can't even describe it. It is definitely a skill in and of itself. And it, it, it's definitely tough. It's intimidating to have these, you know, high profile people that, you know, you want to be personable, you want to be yourself, but you also want to be professional and, and come off as competent when really you're like, dang, can I even like hang with this person on the phone for, I've had some phone calls go two hours. And with that being said, I'm going to tie this into the courage to connect and going back to our operational definition that courage is going and doing what you have to do, fulfilling your role in your own life for the circumstance without knowing where the end of the tunnel is or what the end result may be. Because it's super easy to hop on the phone. Hey, you know, I saw I saw your job posting on your website. I'd love to just connect with you personally. Where if you're qualified for that job and they have an open job posting, that that's definitely a lot higher chances of of getting an interview as opposed to just calling someone randomly. So it's easy to do those things, right? It's encouraging when you get an interview. Have I gotten any interviews from all of my phone calls? No. Have I had a lot of, you know, hang up the phone and just feel really encouraged moments? Yes. And I'm very fortunate. I'm very grateful for that as well. But having the courage to say, you know, I'm going to devote my time. I'm going to invest in researching you before, which I think is on my next slide. And you're not going to connect with everyone knowing that not everyone is going to be willing to give you a few more names and emails in their own contact list, their own network, knowing that it might not go that well. You might say stupid stuff that you might never talk to them again, but consequently, right? You have to have the courage to bet on yourself without seeing that the end of the road that it could go very well that you are professional and although you're young you know you can still provide some valuable conversations if you can walk the walk next i'm going to go on to the second thing of connection right the courage to connect and with these people i'm assuming that i'm not the only person hitting them up so you definitely want to stand out and you have to remember like i said earlier that they are humans and you are connecting with them they're not just people to you know, five minutes in, hey, do you have a job for me? See, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that's way too straightforward. And I try to like point out the elephant in the room, like at the end of the phone call, when we're saying our goodbyes, wrapping up, soliciting another phone call. I'm like, yeah, this is that, you know, kind of awkward point in the conversation where I'm going to bring up that, you know, yes, I am calling you about networking and potential jobs. And if you had anyone that you think I should reach out to, if you feel comfortable giving me their information, if the jobs you think I would be qualified for, I would greatly appreciate that, you know, but also I've really enjoyed our talk, you know, getting to know you and your story and just, you know, saying something kind of like that to wrap it up because they are humans. They're not just a title of some job at a company. They've had all these experiences. Like I said, they're humans. I don't really know how else to phrase that, but it's got to be genuine, right? You, you're trying to, you're trying to not go over the edge, but you're trying to stand out as well. And my next bullet point is to prepare. You know, like I said, going to their LinkedIn profile, going to see if they post anything on YouTube, going to their descriptions of their, you know, bio for whatever company or college or pro team they work for. Or even if they were a college athlete, pro tip, I will go see if I can find their them on the roster, you know, see what stats they had, see what position they played, depending on the sport. And just if they have any accomplishments, things like that, just trying to make it a little bit more personal. Now, trying to sneak that into conversation is a different story. I'm not saying I spent all day, but the mental time and effort into researching, trying to create good questions that you think are valuable, right? That could progress to awesome conversation, but also different. 
you know, but also it's somewhat pertinent to the original topic. It, it's a very rewarding feeling. And if anyone watches Hot Ones on YouTube, it's the show where they eat 10 super hot, progressingly hotter chicken wings with celebrities. That dude, Sean Evans, shout out, is one of the best interviewers. And that's part of the reason why people love going on that show is because he does such a good job researching. And I actually try to emulate that on my phone calls. And this has happened a few times where the person I've been calling, they say, wow, that's a really good question. I've never been asked that before. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll share one right now. College strength coach slash sports scientist. They had been with that school for a very long time. You know, it, it said on their, on their bio that they had conference championships, national championships. They've had people get drafted in multiple sports, you know, final fours, all this kind of stuff. And, and I asked what their favorite one was. I thought it would be interesting to ask. And he, he talked about all the flights and all of the hotels and all the extra gear and stuff like that. And then he's talked about his being at some of his athletes draft parties and just, you know, how often do people, does that come up in conversation? So that was a question that I was really proud of. And I got that just from the simple, his job description, life bio thing on the website, because I thought that that was super interesting. And with these questions, right, try to put yourself in their shoes and think what is going to get them to kind of relax and, you know, let their shoulders down and kind of tilt their head, you know, kind of let their guard down. A question that's not going to make them be super professional in their answer, something that's probably going to make them smile. I'm not saying that all of them have to be geared kind of towards that, but I think that there should definitely be one or two where it's going to be talking about themselves, their own experiences, the stories. It's not very yes or no. I'm fortunate that he, you know, kind of took it and ran with it and shared all of the experiences with me, but indirectly saying you've done your research and that you care about more than just how'd you get your job? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Do you have any tips for me moving forward as a professional, you know, trying to get the job that you have? That's so monotonous. Be different, be genuine, do your research and say thank you. But this is just my strategy, like I said, to openly say this is that awkward part of the conversation. I'm not saying that, that that's the best way to do it, but just to say, you know, like, I, I know you have a lot going on as we all do, but, you know, I, I really am grateful for your time. And, I've, and I'm leaving this phone call a little bit more encouraged than when it started. And I'm very thankful for that. And do they believe me? I like to think so. Am I being genuine? Yes. And that's all you can do. Subsequently, when you're finishing these phone calls is to elicit a potential next step in the process. So say, oh, if, if you'd be interested, I'd, I'd love to reach back out again, you know, three, four weeks. But if you'd be interested to have another phone call, if I thought it went well, and I would like to continue to talk to that person. Now, if you don't genuinely connect, right? And that's one of those things where not everyone's going to be your best friend. Just managing these expectations of networking where not every, you know, if, if all I needed was one call to set you up with a job, it wouldn't be called networking. It would be called make a phone call. Elicit that next step. And, and if they, they name drop someone previously in the conversation or a job or whatever, if you're taking notes during your phone call, you're being prepared. You can circle back to that. Be like, oh, you know, I heard you mention this person's name and that you would give me their contact information. Would you mind doing so? If they brought it up in the first place, chances are they'd give it to you. If I had to sum this up, it would be doubling down on networking because you're increasing the exposure of your name to potential employers. That is part of networking. Yes, you have to be genuine, but you have to understand that there is that intention of potential jobs, meeting other people within their network. You're increasing your opportunity because they, everyone knows everyone in this field. It is the craziest thing. I will name job someone be like, oh, you know, I, I had a call with them last week. They're like, oh, you know, so-and-so or, or they'll name drop someone. I'm like, oh, I got a call with them coming up in a few days. You're increasing your opportunity for exposure or just the amount of exposure in general of these people. And, and there's people I've finished one phone call with. They said, I don't know your work, but I know you can be professional. I know you're doing all the right things, reaching out, and I would be more than willing to pass your name on moving forward if so something comes up. And really, that's all I can ask for is, can you be a facilitator in my journey? I'm asking you for your help. And with that, they're willing to help you out. So it's, it's what value can you bring? Because everything in life, especially in this context of networking, is giving and receiving value, exchanging value. Obviously, they have, some, they have a lot to offer with their position, their networks, just their names, stuff like that. So it's, it's what can you offer to them? And you know, a few people I've had phone calls with, they, they've simply just said, oh, I've, I've enjoyed your, your questions and just 
having these somewhat basic discussions just with new people, just having to kind of flesh out my thought processes and what I believe about certain things and trying to articulate these things that we always talk about, but we never explain. And I've ended phone calls with, if there's anything that you're just kind of curious about, or you don't really know if it makes sense, but you don't want to you know, present it to your, your colleagues or whatever, you just want to spitball, like I'd be more than happy to, to listen. And no one has taken me up on that yet. But knowing that they have that resource, some that that gets it, but isn't in that spot to judge them can speak that language, but isn't directly in their circles, but they can just be more open, you know, and, and we all need that sometimes just it's basically ranting, you're saying, hey, if you ever want to rant about this topic, I'd be more than willing to listen, you know, or if your value is apart from them actually hopping on the phone, you doing everything else maintaining that relationship. Or it could just be providing them a little break in their day, you know, asking them questions that are going to make them smile and reflect and, and realize how awesome everything has been and stuff like that. So figure out what value you can offer. Not everyone is going to love you. Not everyone's going to be your best friend. Not everyone's going to give you more stuff. But if you're courageous, when there's not that much information out there on them, you don't know that much about their background, right? When it's someone that you feel you have no business talking to. And I'm not saying fake it till you make it, but are you willing to own it when you don't feel like it? I feel like that's another way to say courage, just going for it. And connection, be intentional, be genuine. Remember that, that they're humans and go from there. This rant has ended. I hope to see y'all on my Insta at Coach Big Toe, my Twitter at Coach Big Toe. Y'all are already listening to my podcast. Hope to see you on my YouTube. And I hope this had a lot of value. Please comment, like, subscribe, slide in my DMs. Let me know feedback, what you want to hear next, everything along those lines. And, you know, let's get better together like always.